played it. Played it as a series I've created to highlight games that I've enjoyed and deserve to be played. Many online sales these days on different distribution platforms such as Steam, GOG, Green Man Gaming, and the list goes on. These games can be ad added pittance and you have no excuses. First on the list is Thomas Was Alone. Thomas Was Alone is an indie puzzle platformer made by Mike Biddle and was released in 2012. Just like any other puzzle platformer, you run and jump your way to the end of each level. As you move on in levels, you get to play as different blocks that each have their own characteristics. And this is where the puzzle bit of puzzle platforming comes in, as you need to use the various abilities of the blocks to solve the puzzles. Some jump higher than others, one can float and think she's a superhero, along with a whole host of other characteristics. What transforms this game from a rather run-in-the-mill platformer is a narrator. Thomas was alone. Well, a weird first thought to have. The overarching story is an emergent AI. And the narrator voices the inner thoughts of the blocks, often humorously, giving their own distinct personality. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to... What's the word? Jump. It worked. Thomas had... And this interplay with each block's innate characteristics gives life to the characters. Thomas, the first block you meet, is adventurous and inquisitive and has average jump height. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. 1. The whole alone thing. 2. Portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. 3. Falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. Chris is complex, has a complex about his size and jump compared to Thomas. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? John is a boastful athletic high jumper. John knew. He knew that this was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. And so on. I found myself completing the levels to learn what happens to these characters and see who they'll meet next and what the abilities will be. The levels are fun too. Some definitely require ingenuity, ingenuity, bending gravity, and careful platforming. And there are some tricky special items to find hidden among the way that requires mastery of each block's characteristics. I do have some minor quibbles with the game, however. Moving each block around individually can get rather tedious. Move Thomas to one side of the level, and then Chris to the other side, and John somewhere else. In later levels, you have a number of blocks under your control. They each need to be moved individually. Jumping a number of blocks up platforms set up like stairs I found especially annoying. And lastly, I completed this game to 100% with only five hours on the clock, and I'm a player who stops to smell the roses. All in all, it's a fun, quirky little game with a lot of charm. I hope you'll play it next chance you get. If you liked this episode of Played It, please like and subscribe. I'm Mike Like, and thanks for watching. I must say, I wish I went to a different island. This doesn't look like it's very, very, very profitable. Profitable? Is that the word I'm looking for? Hey, what's that over there? Hey, what's that over there? A light. Hey, a fire. Hopefully there's nothing next to the fire. Something had to light it. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilem before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all...